Uh, welcome back, everyone who's here, been here yesterday, and a special welcome to anyone who couldn't make it yesterday. Um, and apologies that some of us may look a little bit droopy-eyed. Uh, it was a very long day yesterday, very full, very wonderful, um, and it was a long evening as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I hand you over now to uh, Kate Forsyth for confronting historical fact with the unexplained. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here today, and I feel very privileged to be on this panel of amazing um, women. Um, I think I've been looking forward to this ever since Richard told me about it. So I, I would like to begin by asking them all just to introduce themselves and to talk just a little bit about their work. We will go into deeper um, detail about their work in just a moment. And then I might actually start with you. Okay, thank you. Um, I should say that I'm not uh, a historical fiction writer, I'm a literary scholar, um, so I'm coming at this subject from a slightly different angle um, from the other people on the panel, and I think from probably most people in this room. I started working on historical fiction um, Oh, uh, 10 years ago, I think. No, more than, more than 10 years ago. And I started writing on it because it seemed to me that it had been neglected. And it seemed to me that it had been neglected critically, partly because it was associated with women writers. And I think 1990 was a key year from that point of view, with the publication of Possession, A.S. Byatt's Possession, which won the Booker Prize, of course. And that's a parallel narrative novel. Um, and that, I think, is the date when things start to shift a literary critic's start to take the historical novel more seriously. Um, I'm Essie Fox. Um, I write historical novels which are based in the Victorian era. As well as writing in that era, um, I do try to bring in certain ideas of fairy tale elements uh, or myths or legends or even stories that are supposed to be true but perhaps have different truths to them but they all have one certain truth which is that about life, death, love. So I'm Deborah Harkness. I am a uh, professor of history at the University of Southern California. My fiction is a bit hard to classify in that it has fantastic elements and science fiction elements and also historical elements. Um, and uh, the most recent, I've written a trilogy called the All Souls Trilogy. The first book was uh, A Discovery of Witches. The second book was Shadow of Night, and the third book just came out a few months ago, I guess now, called The Book of Life. Hello, um, I'm Jessie Burton, and um, I've written one novel called The Miniaturist, um, which is out now. And um, just very briefly, it's set in 1686, and over three months of a time period, and it tells the story of a young girl, a young bride who is uh, gifted a doll's house um, which is a miniature version of their marital home by her new husband. And I suppose the sort of unexplained element of my book that the, is, a, is that the house starts replicating her real life. Um, Diana, I'd like to move to you now. And what I'd really like to know is what do you think sparked your fascination and your interest in this area of study? And, and were there any you know, fascinating and unexpected serendipities that in your life's journey towards you know, your area of work now. And these books by women were being dismissed, and you still get that today. David Starkey, for instance, has been mm. uh, very rude, offensive, I would say, about Philippa Gregory's novels. He talks about them as the mills and boonification of history. Mm. He really doesn't like them. And there is still that snobbery, I think, about women's writing and about the ways in which women write history as romance or as myth or as fairy tale. So it was partly to do with all those kinds of things coming together. And that was why I started to, started to think about these books, to take them seriously and to think about the ways in which women's historical fiction can fill in the gaps in history. History is about men, about politics, about popes and emperors, about battles, about conflict, Vikings waving big axes, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I think that the whole question of the sort of feminization of genres is really an interesting one because I do think that's part of, of the problem. And now that what, what's happened oddly is that fantasy is sort of fractured into all these subgenres. So now you have sort of epic fantasy, which is you know, the descendants of Tolkien, and that's sort of serious. 
but then there's all these other kinds that then become sort of lesser by comparison. So if you don't write epic fantasy, you're somehow, you know, so it's just, it's just amazing to me how often we just want to subdivide, recategorize. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's in an effort to sort of make parts of that whole, um, you know, somehow seen as lesser in comparison, easier. You know, and what I would say to anyone, including David Starkey, is, is that, you know, if you think it's so easy, you should try it. Yes. Uh, is it the sense of the panel that only women can write uh, historical fiction about? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Uh, the question was, I believe, is it the, the belief of the panel that only women can write historical fiction? About women. Uh, about women. Well, I certainly don't believe that. Does anyone else believe that? I, th I think if you read Michelle Faber, The Crimson Petal and the White, I think, I think you can see there that, you know, men can certainly do it in lots and lots of ways. And I think G.R.R. Martin, that's fantasy. I know historical fantasy bringing in so many elements, but I think he's almost Dickensian. You know, characterization, male or female, is, is so vivid. And, and either you have that gift or you don't. And I don't think it's anything to do. Otherwise, you know, how would women write from a male perspective? And they very often do. An enormous amount of fantasy is really male fantasies about women. And most extreme, of course, is the witchcraft scare. So all the, and all the more sinister and frightening ones uh, are largely simply about uh, frightening women. In some way, the modern thing is, is women taming this. But it's important to realise that the witchcraft scare was not, in fact, manufactured by men. There have been witches for millennia and when you look at witchcraft literature over time what's amazing is how the witch it's not always the witch is not always the same and it reflects the cultural anxieties of the period that the witch is sort of shaped in thank you for being such a wonderful audience thank you, thank you.